Back when I was still in high school, I used to be a member of the dance club along with my best friend Marciana. One day, there was a big event at school, and we had to perform. Everything ran smoothly until the main attraction, our dance number. It was one of the highlights of the evening. It was finally our time to perform on stage. Part of the choreography was to switch positions, in which we had to run through the backstage. Here's the catch. There were so many people backstage, all the other performers, makeup artists, models, assistants, and other staff members. We couldn't pass the narrow backstage in time. But there was one other way that Antonio, Marciana's boyfriend, the stage manager, taught us. To go below the stage. The school built that tunnel underneath the stage for this very reason. To make a way for performers to pass through. There was no lighting down there because it was still being constructed. So we took our phones out to light our way. When we were about to reach the other side, we saw an old hermit with a stitched up mouth and long beard and hair. In an instant, Marciana screamed and then collapsed. Antonio and I had to drag Marciana out. The performance was cut short and she was rushed to the hospital. While we were walking home, Antonio was so angry because they told him he couldn't accompany her. He started punching whatever he could and throwing random objects he found on the ground. Please don't. We'll just come back in the morning. Antonio stopped and tossed the stone aside into a nearby mound. In frustration, he approached, kicked, and destroyed it. A few seconds later, a light emanated from what was left of the mound. A small Bearded old man in black garments appeared out of nowhere. The old man looked at us with pure hatred in his eyes. Upon closer inspection, we noticed that his mouth was sewn up. We were about to scream and run, but he suddenly vanished right before our eyes. We rushed home since there was a heavy storm that followed. We had no idea that Antonio's carelessness would have such a horrific impact on our lives. The next morning, I suddenly got a text from Marciana. She said she was awake now, but not feeling well and vomiting a lot. It was followed by a phone call from Antonio. Alex, I don't feel good, he said in a shivering tone. Are you sick as well? I asked. The line got disconnected. I felt dizzy when I tried to get out of bed, so I asked my mother to come to my room. What is happening? My mother asked. She was shocked when she removed my blanket. Alexandra, your foot is swollen. I then realized I couldn't move my left foot. My mother quickly sent me to the hospital. My foot was x-rayed and I was given medicine. Days passed and my left foot didn't get any better. I also found out that Marciana was still sick and worse. Antonio died. Antonio's death was mysterious and no one knew what caused it. Doctors were unable to provide a diagnosis for sudden illnesses and my foot had developed an aching wound and had tripled in size. Marciana sent me a picture showing she had grown too much hair all over her body. She developed a beard, which looked funny. But when she mentioned she was urinating a black liquid, I was really worried for her. It was all so bizarre. It was as if someone was trying to punish us. My mother took me to an albulario named Aling Bella. She founded a church which was built thanks to the donations of customers she was able to heal. She prayed before starting the healing ritual, lit a white candle and pointed it towards a basin filled with water. The wax formed a black figure. This is the cause of your pain. We need to hurry before it's too late. This old man is trying to kill you. She warned, 
She blessed my forehead, took the figure out of the basin, then covered it with paper and put it inside of an empty can. She sprinkled some holy water on top and covered it. Boil this can for an hour for seven days straight. Open it on the seventh day, Aling Bella instructed. My mother gave a 500 peso bill to Aling Bella, but she refused, saying her healing services were free of charge. But you can put it in the donation box of the church, she said firmly as she handed her the donation box. For her wound, apply this essential oil made from the finest herbs, she added while pouring it on my foot. This will cost 500 pesos. When my mother handed her the money, I felt an itch on my foot. Aling Bella quickly handed me a bottle of medicine. This is a natural side effect. It means it's working. Just use this to stop the itch. Anyway, this is free for my new best customer. You deserve it. She opened the bottle and rubbed liquid on the new rash on my foot. I felt a burning sensation. If you cannot tolerate the burning sensation, just ice it along with this handkerchief blessed by the Pope. Only at a discounted price of 500 pesos, you didn't even have to go to Rome. She said as she offered the hanky to my mother. We quickly left as my mother sensed something was fishy. However, my wound seemed to have dried up ever since we went to Aling Bella's miraculous church. I phoned Marciana to tell her to try to go to the same church, but I was shocked by what her mother told me. Marciana became insane, as if possessed by a demon. What happened to my best friends? I wasn't able to visit Marciana as my foot was not fully healed yet. I just spent my days crying. Before the seventh day of boiling the can, I found out that it was opened and the figure was missing. We returned to Aling Bella's church the next day to tell her the can had been opened and my wound had worsened. There were worms inside. The church was closed to prepare for mass, but since Aling Bella lived in a luxurious house next to it, she saw us and let us in. I was carried by my mother and put on the couch. My mother removed the gauze covering my wound and was surprised to see more worms. Aling Bella had a premonition. You are being followed by the old man, Nuno Sapunso. Suddenly, a faint, popish laugh could be heard from behind us. <laughs> the lights flickered, and when we turned around, we saw a little old man with a long beard dressed in black. His mouth was sewn shut, but he could speak without moving his lips. It was as if he was talking right into our minds. You and your friends dare disrespect my home and completely destroy it. My mother knelt in front of him and apologized, but he refused. He spat on her instead, and the fluids from his mouth landed on her face. My mother hid her face behind her hands and screamed in agony. It burned. Aling Bella grabbed a crucifix and held it in front of the man, but the old man just grinned and pointed his ancient finger at her. Aling Bella suddenly twitched and was thrown and pinned on the wall. You abuse the power that my kind gave you and use it for your benefit, shouted the small evil man. The church shook as if there was a huge earthquake. Aling Bella was suffocating as if someone was choking her. Then she passed out. My mother was still covering her face, now with only one hand as her other hand grabbed mine. Please, sir, I'm very sorry for what we did. Please. Don't hurt anyone anymore. I begged for forgiveness as tears rolled down my face. Finally, that's exactly what I needed to hear. He said, then he disappeared. Since that encounter, we've been making offerings to the mound near our house. The mound's old man seems to have forgiven me. My mother's face had a scar which she can hide under some makeup. Marciana, my dearest friend, is gradually regaining her sanity, and her beard has stopped growing. Everything was back to normal. I always make sure I ask for permission when I pass by the mound and say, Tabi Tabi Po, 